Hey guys, Spudknocker here, as always, and today we're coming back to the DCS Supercarrier module to answer a few questions and address a few concerns that cropped up in the comments section of my previous video, which was a first look and kind of first impressions video on the Supercarrier module for DCS World here. Now, the biggest question that came up was, of course, uh, Spud, what are you doing? You missed the call the ball, call on the radio menu, and uh, so we didn't get to hear the LSO interact with you when you're coming down on short final in the groove to land on the carrier. And yes, that is 100% true. I definitely goofed that, and that is my bad. And so to make up for it for you guys, I have four different types of landings um, at the end of this video after we answer some questions here to show off interaction with the LSOs on the super carrier here. We've got a touch and go slash bolter we've got a intentional wave off in which I just fly a horrific approach to actually try and get a wave off for you guys and then I go for two actually good approaches like I got a four wire and an okay three wire for the fourth approach and landing so the kind of the second biggest question that people came up with me was why aren't you showing off the F-14 on the Super Carrier? We know you're a huge Tomcat guy, and that is 100% true. I love the Tomcat in DCS. It is truly my favorite module in DCS world. However, this is a preview build of DCS that we're looking at and that I'm recording the Super Carrier in for you guys, which means it's kind of closed off. We can't add any player modules to the build um, besides the FA-18C, the Super Carrier module, the SU-33, and the Persian Gulf map. So when the Super Carrier does make its way to public hands and uh, does make its way to the open beta build of DCS, we will in fact get to see lots of F-14 content in combination with the super carrier here. Next biggest question I got was of course, uh, how is your performance on the super carrier? And surprisingly, I actually think my performance on the super carrier in those videos that I was making, whether I was in the replay mode, actually shooting video for that awesome wings intro, or if, while I was actually flying the mission itself, my frame rates were actually a lot better than I've seen in single player in DCS World Open Beta for a long time now. I think that because we do all fly in Open Beta, we tend to get some issues, we get some bugs that crop up, and it's just kind of the nature of the beast. And I think that DCS and, I'm sorry, Eagle Dynamics has done a really good job kind of working some of those kinks out. And my performance sitting on the deck next to all those models was far and away better than just flying around in single player in an air start. So I think, and I hope you guys will be pleasantly surprised, both, uh, you know, your track IR guys and your VR guys out there. And the most biggest kind of concern that people tended to have was how is this going to affect multiplayer? And, well, it's going to affect multiplayer in a couple different ways. Um, and one way that I think is going to be a bit surprising to some of you guys. One of the things about the Super Carrier here is it is very, very procedurally based. You need to know a lot to get the most out of the Super Carrier itself. So, I, in my opinion, this product is aimed at those very serious single player folks, as well as the very um, kind of organized kind of community guys that run uh, private squadrons or private air wings or private carrier groups, things like that, where guys actually have to take check rides and stuff to actually get membership and whatnot. And that's going to be great for those kinds of guys. Guys are going to be able to use the radios and the new frequencies and whatnot to its absolute maximum effect for Marshall stacks, for actual case ones, actual case twos, and actual case threes. But for those servers that I think a lot of people tend to kind of dip their toe into multiplayer in, those 24-hour always running servers, it's really not going to make that much of a difference because players for the most part are kind of running around willy-nilly. There's no coordination between the players for the most part, and kind of, people are kind of just doing their own thing, and that's really not what this module is made for. It's made for that, those organized groups that do mission briefings and whatnot, and for those guys who really dig hard into single player for campaigns and things like that, and like the fly as procedurally as possible. In fact, I would bet that in a while here, we won't even see the super carrier module in the maps and in the missions for those large, always on 24 seven multiplayer servers because it really doesn't add anything to that type of experience but it sure adds a heck of a ton of awesomeness to a lot of those more procedurally driven missions like the ones that I run on Spuds Buds or like the CSG8 guys run or any other kind of more private groups as well as adding a lot of playability to your single player guys. So that's kind of it and what I've got for now in terms of addressing things that come up in the comments section of my previous video. If you guys have any more questions or concerns, please, please, please let 
me see them in the comments section below and I'll try to get to as many of them as possible for the release of the super carrier. So thanks a lot guys and enjoy these three approaches and landings. So have a good one guys. And we're fast, that's okay. We will make it work. Now we're a bit too far to the side of the ship, but we can see clearly that the deck is clear. There we go, and into the brake. We use left rudder to dig the, the nose down into the ground so that we don't incur too much of an altitude gain. And drop the flaps first. Gears coming down. Put the speed brake back out. We're a bit high, but we're starting to get on speed. In the F-18, I like to air high rather than low because the F-18 does like to drop like a rock especially at lower power settings. So we'll go ahead and start bringing her on in. We'll open up that radio menu just so that we have it open. As a reminder to myself that yes, we do need to in fact make the ball call. I think maybe I had it in my head that it was automatic. Our HUD, our HUD is in fact caged here because if we didn't, our HUD would be way off to that right hand side by the ghost velocity vector. Coming in here. Coming around. We don't want to cut the corner too tight, but we don't also don't want to overshoot. It's kind of uh, getting yourself right in the right spot. And there we're right on the glide slope. Going for a much better approach this time. Looks like we're good on lineup. Three zero Port of all. Four point two. Little low. And we floated over the wires on that one. And we're going to go ahead and parallel the BRC as we get back to pattern. Keep in mind here that we're going to have a lot of nose up trim. And it kind of caught me off guard there and that's why we got off of our pattern altitude of 600 feet. Alright, we've got our hook down, right at 800 feet, a little bit fast, but we'll make it work. We're lined up a little bit better next to the carrier. And deck is clear, and into the brake. Speed brake out, making sure we don't gain too much altitude like we did last time. Flaps are coming down. Gears coming down. And we're right at the top point where we should start turning in. Now 
as you can see, it's quite a short amount of time between when you call the ball and when you actually touch the deck, whether it was a good approach or a bad approach. So we'll try and mess it up as quick as we can after we call the ball. <laughs> right now we're flying a pretty darn good approach. So hopefully we can get it, get ourselves a wave off. Looks like we're going to overshoot it a little bit. Three zero Point ball. Four point eight. All right, let's see if we can screw it up by lining up this way. We'll keep it lined up right. All right, so full power. I come over the deck of the ship. And we'll parallel the BRC as best we can, climbing up to 600 feet. Keep in mind that that nose up trim is really gonna screw with you. You're really gonna have to push the nose forward quite a bit. When you're changing from that on speed trim to coming back to a position where you can climb up at a good airspeed back into the pattern altitude. So that's what a wave off looks like. And you can see on the actual kind of overlay for the iFloss, we got those red wave off lights as well. So pretty cool. And uh, why don't we go ahead and try and make an actual good approach and see if uh, old Spud here can actually put her on the deck with a good landing. All right, we gotta ascend a bit. And one, two, three, and in the break. It's not left rudder to stay as level as we possibly can. I'll go ahead and bring the flaps down to full. Nice level turn there. That's looking a lot better than the last couple attempts. It's starting to come back. I used to be a good at making carrier landings on the Stennis, but uh, I think it's coming back. Come the gear. Coming down to about 600 feet now. Nose up trim to get on speed and on AOA. Much better of a pattern than even the wave off attempt, even though that felt like a really nice pattern, even though we we're trying to mess it up. And okay, time to make the turn in. Do the base leg. There we go. Back on speed. Just triple checking that we got the hook down, which we do. We're good on speed. Increase the AOA just slightly. Looks like we're coming too far astern of the ship but we'll make it work. All right, looks like we're right on glide slope and we're lining up too far to the right. left. We're high. A little fast. Okay. Four wire. Okay, we're fast for a four wire. Bring the hook up, bring the flaps up, 
fold the wings, and we'll taxi clear. I was a little bit slow coming off of the uh, landing area there, but that's okay, that comes with practice. All right, so I'm pretty sure that we, so he said okay for wire, but we were fast for most of the uh, lineup. A little fast, a little low. Maybe a little too close to the ship this time. But we can see, oh, maybe that's actually about perfect. We can see the deck is certainly clear. And about one, two, three, four, and here we go. Into the brake. Speed brakes out. Using that left rudder to make sure we don't gain too much altitude. Full flaps coming in. Gears coming down. And there we go. We're on speed. The best way to get on speed here is just to make sure that you're trimming it out so that your center position of your stick leaves you at the right angle of attack to stay right in the middle of that E-bracket. We're going to start our turn, the base leg, and then into final. We're open our radio menu, be ready for the call of the ball. Call on the radio menu. Might be a little bit high this time. Better to air high than low. You definitely don't want to have a ramp strike of any kind. Alright, we're a little low. on glide slope. A little left, or a little right. A little low. Right on glide slope. Coming left. A little high. And full power. Alright. Okay, free wire. Hey, that's not bad. Hooks coming up, wings are being folded, nose wheel steering's to high, and we're out of the way. So, there you have it. There's a little carrier landing for you. Not sure what's going on with the nose wheel steering. There we go. And we're out of the way, ready for the next guy to come on in for his landing. So. Uh, there you have it guys. There's a little look at how you interact with the LSOs and the kind of guidance they'll give you What you're gonna see when you get a wave off what you're gonna see when you get a bolter Or you do a touch and go they equate to the same thing in DCS world here as well as they do in real life and um, So I hope you guys enjoyed it and uh, We'll see you in the next one fly safe and stay healthy out there guys